So in Blender 4.1, this new node came out, which is really, really useful. Um, it's the active camera input in geometry nodes. And you might think, how is this useful at all? But it's going to allow us to do some really neat camera culling stuff, um, which is going to be really great for optimizations on scenes where you are scattering a lot of objects or even just deleting out geometry that isn't visible to the camera. It's going to be super cool and I'm going to go through a, a small little node group that you can make that you can add to the end of your various setups and optimize your scenes. So here I have just set up a little demo file where I have this geometry node set up scattering some cubes on this plane. And you can see right now from the camera view, we can only roughly see cubes that are in this field of view, but we're still going to be loading all these cubes into memory when it comes to render them. So the question is, is there a way that we can easily delete everything that's outside the camera field of view? So we could do this before Blender 4.1, but in Blender 4.1 this new node came out called Active Camera, which basically gives us an object input for whatever camera is being rendered from in the scene. So from this we can plug it into an object info node, get its location, rotation, and this is super useful for us because now it means we can get vectors from this which we can use for all sorts of things, as you'll see. So how do we get a map for what the camera can see? Well, we need to do this with vectors, basically. And you need to imagine that for every instance here, for every cube, we're going to shoot a ray up towards the camera. And if that ray intersects with this square of the camera here, then we're going to give that a value of 1. But if the ray, say, here comes and it shoots towards the camera, but it doesn't intersect with the square of the camera, we're going to give that a value of zero. And if a ray comes from behind the camera and intersects with the back of it, we're going to give that a value of zero too, because we don't want to load that in. So the node we're going to use to do this is the Raycast node. And if you've never used this node before, it's super useful. Uh, it should be pretty intuitive how we're going to use it today. So I'm going to start by adding in a grid. And I want this to be the grid that is positioned basically uh, on this box frame of the camera here so that whatever the camera sees this grid will fill that. So if I just join up this grid for now with the main geometry stream it will just be placed at origin so what I want to do is I want to set its position to be whatever the camera's position is and you can see we get it there. Now I also want to set its rotation to match whatever the camera is and now I want to essentially slide it on its local z-axis to line up with the front of the camera here. So I'm going to add another transform before we set, set its position and just move the z-component. And I'll just line it up somewhere like this. And now you can see what we have. And I'm going to increase the x and y a touch and then increase the x a bit more. This depends on your aspect ratio and your focal length of the camera. And because I don't want to have to manually input anything into this system, ever really, I, I'm going to make this work so that for the lowest focal length I can see myself using in the future is probably 20 millimeters. So if this grid can fill the field of view at 20 millimeters, it'll probably work at every field of view. So now we have this grid lined up with the camera here. We can see as we move the camera, the grid will follow it, which is pretty cool. Also, if we make another active camera, and set it to this, you can see the grid will move to that camera. So that's really the power of this, this node and this workflow. Let's think about how this Raycast node is going to work. It works a little bit like the Geometry Proximity node, if you've ever used this, where the attribute depends on the context of what you're viewing it on. So for this Raycast node, I want the target geometry to be this grid, which I'll plug in there. But the actual attributes itself we won't be able, we won't view them on the grid we'll view them on the on the points and then we can view the is hit attribute here so right now the rays are just shooting from every point they're going directly down and that's not what we want we want from every point them to be pointing towards the camera so what i'm going to do is take the camera position here and i'm going to take the position of every point and then let's subtract this from the camera's position. So I want to explain a bit more why subtracting these two coordinates gives a vector that points from one to the other. And the best way I'm going to do this is in MS Paint. 
and I'm going to do it with position vectors. So you can imagine if we have a vector pointing like this, this has an x component which would represent its x coordinate and a y component which would represent its y coordinate. And then we have another point over here which has a position like this. And then we basically take this away from this. So you can imagine doing subtraction in with arrows. You have to do this kind of thing where you draw um, draw the arrows tail to head basically. And now subtracting them, we get this line basically. And the, the very definition of this line is a vector pointing from one coordinate to another. So that's basically why it works, but we're just doing it in three dimensions. We've actually got done the vector the wrong way here. Everything's pointing away from camera. So let's flip the inputs here so that we take position away from the camera's position. And there we go. We can see now we get this mask, which is almost what we want. If I just pin this group here, you can see as I rotate the camera, we're getting now a mask for all the points that are in this field of view are white and all the points outside are black. But you see there's a problem in that all the points behind the camera are also white. And the reason for this is that the Raycast node doesn't know any better that the camera's pointing this way versus this way. So it's not going to know that this is a back face and we don't need to consider these points and this is a front face. Because right now we're using a grid which only has one face. So essentially what I want to do here is give this some thickness so it has two normal values and then I want to look at the rays that hit this thicker plane now and if the normal values are correspond with the normal values of the front of this plane we're going to keep them but if they hit the normals that correspond with the back of the plane we're going to delete them so first of all let's replace this grid with a cube and i'm going to just essentially give it the same dimensions on x and y but just give it a small thickness it can be a really tiny one 0.1 now if you view this, you see we basically have the same thing, just a little bit thicker. Then I'm just going to plug that into the translate here. And then we should just get the same result. So now, how do we get the normal here? Well, we could use this hit normal parameter. But you see, there's a problem with this in that as we rotate, it depends in which way the camera's facing. And if I view the transform geometry here, and I view the normal attribute, you can see what I mean is that the normals change as the camera rotates because they're aligning to world space. So what we want to do is make these essentially stick to the object from when we created it here. So I, I'm just going to capture this attribute. And this way they'll essentially just stick to the object and they won't move in world space. And then I'm going to pass this attribute through the raycast node so the points will see what value the attribute is at where they intersect. So I'm going to set this from float to vector plug this into the attribute and now we can pass it through here. So let's view the points again and let's take a look at the attribute. And you can see now we get something interesting. The normals seem to stick to the camera a lot better here. So now what I'm going to do is a little bit of vector math and I'm going to use the dot product. And what this does is basically compare this vector to this vector. So if we set this to minus one, we'll see that wherever the normal is facing backwards, we'll get a value of zero. And wherever the normal is facing forwards, we get a value of close to one. Uh, it's not exactly one. You see on the edges here, we get some gray values. So that's not exactly what we want. So I'm just going to run this through a, a greater than node and set it to greater than zero. And now you can see we get this, this mask that only affects these front points. And as we move the camera, rotate it, spin it around, upside down, it should all work out. There are a few cases where you get these little points here and these come from the edges, but it's uh, quite minimal and it's much better than what we had before. So I'm essentially just going to use this as our deletion mask. So I'm going to delete geometry, I'm going to delete instances, and then I'm going to plug this into the selection. And you can see we get the exact opposite of what we want. So just to invert this, I'm going to use a Boolean math. Pop it in here and set it to not. And now you can see we get perfect camera culling. So we move the camera around. If you ever see that things are visible in the frame getting cold, 
go back and tweak your scale here of the cube and you should resolve these issues and now if we switch the active camera because we're using the active camera node everything continues to work so that's pretty cool so I'm going to do one last thing and this isn't a necessary step but I want to be able to use this setup across many files and for many different setups so I'm going to grab all these nodes and I'm just going to press Control G and group them essentially this is just a node group that I can maybe add to my asset browser and import into many different files and add to the end of anywhere where I have instances that I want a camera call. Another neat thing you can do in 4.1 is actually add this switch menu operator and what we can do here is decide if we want to actually delete real geometry as well as instances or just real geometry and that kind of thing. So I'm going to make a little menu function here. The way you access the inputs for this node is in the end menu. If you go to node you'll see under here menu switch you have your A and your B. You can rename them just like you would in a node group. So I'm just going to duplicate up my delete geometry node, set this one to point. So with my delete geometry point node, I'm just going to plug in the same mask that we use. And now I'll be able to switch between points and instances there. And if I want to call both, I have to do something a little more sophisticated. Set a both option here. I'm going to have to separate the incoming geometry into its components. So I'm going to join up the anything that's real geometry, meshes, curves, and point clouds. And then instances can go through this delete instances, and the real geometry goes through delete point. And then we join these together, plug that into both, make sure we use our Boolean mask here. Now if I check this out, I can set this to both, and we get the result we were after.